This video is all about understanding the concept of managed nodes in ROS2. We start with a conceptual idea, we describe it, we understand why we need it, and then we'll move on to coding a simple demo example using managed nodes to see how it is implemented in C++ in ROS2. So let's get started. This video assumes that you have a basic understanding of publishing, subscribing, and services in ROS2. If not, I have a Medium blog where I've described all of this in ROS2 step by step. So I'll add the links in the description below and you can always check them out. If not, you always can comment on this video and I will make videos on those simple ideas as well. To understand managed nodes, let's start with a simple problem statement. Suppose you're working on a project with five nodes. One of the nodes is for a hardware component, let's say a camera. You want the camera to publish images. So what we normally do in ROS1 and in normal nodes in ROS2 is we make a node for the camera, which will have a publisher. And once the node of this camera is up, it will load the device drivers, configure the camera and start publishing images, right? Now, what if you want a lot more control over this node? Let's say the node is up, but we want to decide when the device drivers are loaded, when the camera is configured, when the image publishing begins and when it stops, when it pauses, when it begins again. And also you want to decide when you want to disable the camera. So unconfigure the camera. So you want a lot more control over this node and over your hardware, right? This is abstracted out and simplified in a managed node or a lifecycle node in ROS2. How so? Let's look at a simple example here of a publisher and a subscriber. So a listener talker example we've all seen when we are learning ROS or ROS2. In this example, you have a listener node which subscribes to a topic and a publisher node which publishes to the same topic. So as soon as both these nodes are up, the publisher will start publishing messages and the subscriber will listen to these messages and print it out, right? Now let's look at the second example. We will implement the example you see right now in ROS2 in C++ once we are done with our explanation. Also remember that this is not my own code. What I've done is I researched a little bit on managed nodes or lifecycle nodes, and then they had this demo example. I just made minor changes, but I coded everything from scratch based on that guide to understand how everything is done line by line. And what follows after the conceptual part of the video is coding everything from scratch. In this case, as we were talking about the camera, what we are doing is we want a lot more control over the publisher. So instead of a normal node, what we've done here is use a lifecycle node. Bear with me for a second and I'll explain everything here. Now let's say this modified talker node, which we call lifecycle talker node is up, but we don't want the node to configure the publishers inside it. We want to have control over that. And once it is configured, we still want to decide when this publisher will publish anything. So in that case, what we do is we use a lifecycle node here where we have control over all of these. In the previous example I showed where you just had a listener talker combination, you only saw the method publisher when it comes to the publishing node, right? In this case, you see a lot more than that. You see on configure, on activate, on deactivate, on cleanup, on shutdown. These methods or interfaces are actually provided by the lifecycle node itself, which is the parent node of this class, instead of us using node as the parent class. So we have all the control on this node based on these methods. So each method can be called and we call it using a service client. Normally you don't need a service client to control the publisher, right? Because you have no control over the publisher once the node is up. Right now, what we're doing is we have a service client and the lifecycle node exposes its control using services. So we are using two services here, one to get state, one to change state. And because there are services, we need a service client. So that's why we make a new node which is the service client node, which actually will have two service clients inside it. So whenever we want to make this lifecycle publisher do anything, let's say configure or activate or deactivate or clean up or shut down, we send this command using the service. And that is why we need the service client. Now let's look at the easiest part, which is the subscriber. The subscriber is still subscribing to the message. And along with that, there is one more subscriber for our convenience. That subscriber is about notification. So whenever the state of this lifecycle publisher or lifecycle node changes, because it's a lifecycle node, what the parent functionality does is it will write to a fixed message name so that anyone in the system can actually read and understand what state this lifecycle node is moving from and to. So in our case, the lifecycle publisher publishes the state whenever it moves from one to the other. And the subscriber in our case is just subscribing to that topic. So all the time it just has information about what state the publisher is moving from and what state it is going to. So the subscriber is still simple, 
the publisher changes a lot because you need a lot more control using these five methods. So we use these five methods to have a lot more control over the publisher. And how do we use them? We use them using service calls from the service client. So effectively, you have your service client controlling the state of this lifecycle node or the state of this lifecycle token node. And then this lifecycle token node publishes or it doesn't publish based on what state it is in. Now imagine a scenario when you have a hardware device using this node, what we can do is we can control what the hardware device is doing, even though we are in the middle of the run. If you want to stop using your device midway for some specific reason, what you can do is you can use these service calls. So in our case, you can change the state using one service call. And also this service client can read the state of the publisher or of the lifecycle node using another service call. So that is what we constantly do. Using the service client, we control the publisher node and then the publisher node will just publish when it is able to. So in this example, we have a lot more control. Now, if you look at this UML diagram, you also see something called Collie script. What we are doing in this example while coding is that you have your service client also, but you interact with the service client using a Collie script, which is just a function. It is not a method and it is not a part of the class service client. So what we're doing here is using the service client after every couple of seconds, we are moving from one state to the other in the publisher. So that basically demos the functionality of a lifecycle node or a managed node where you're moving from one state to the other based on your requirements. And that is what we are trying to show in this example. So let's move on to coding and let's see how this demo example is implemented in C++ from scratch. Remember this UML diagram because based on this UML diagram, we will implement everything in C++ in ROS2. So let's move to the best part, which is actually writing code. Okay, so here we are. We will start with creating a new workspace. So we are in the home directory. Let's call it ROS2 workspace. Okay, let's go to this now. Now we need to make sure that we are sourcing Galactic, right? So for that, we need to do this. Source opt ross galactic setup dot bash. I have set up an alias on my computer. So for me, that alias is s galactic, but it's effectively this. Okay, so after sourcing ROS2 or sourcing Galactic, what we need to do is create a new package right now. ROS2 package create. We'll type and see make. Here we add the name of the package we want. So this will be life cycle demo followed by package dependencies in our case the package dependencies are the following rcl cpp life cycle messages std messages and rcl cpp life cycle that is it let's create a new package here let's see okay so we have a new package now what we will do is we will start coding so we will start creating our nodes the first node will be the listener node. let's go to vs code i use vs code but you can use anything Okay, so here we are and we want to make our first node, which will be the listener node. This node is responsible for subscribing to two different topics from Lifecycle Publisher. One, messages where it will listen to everything published by the Lifecycle Publisher. And second, transition events, which is a topic where we can see and understand what transitions are happening on Lifecycle Publisher. So this means we will have two subscribers in this listener node. Let's start making this right now. New file, listener.cpp. We will not have include files, so no HPP or H files. Ideally, you should do that for a proper project, but this is a demo project, so let's skip that for now. That means all methods will be in line. We'll start with int main right now. Let's see. Okay.
Okay, perfect. Now we will include our header files necessary for making this node. Memory, because we will be using shared pointers. RCLCPP, so this header is needed to do everything about ROS2. So we have this one and then we will be using this message which is in std messages we will be using string transition events event now let's make a class for the node let's call this node listener it will inherit from node this is a standard way of making nodes in C++ in ROS2 now we will have two types of members public and private public members include constructors and other methods we will use to interact with this node and then private in our case we'll have two members two different subscribers the first subscriber is used for getting information on the topic messages where the publisher or lifecycle publisher in our case will publish messages and the second one will be used to get transition event messages so that we know what's actually happening in lifecycle publisher when the transitions are occurring from one state to the other so let's make these two subscribers right now we will use shared pointer rclcpp subscription standard way of making subscribers in C++ ROS2 messages message string so we will publish string messages and we are going to subscribe here these string messages will be published in lifecycle publisher message subscription is the name of this subscriber now let's create another subscriber where instead of std messages you will have life cycle up uh, life cycle messages this is not a string this will be transition event and let's name this notification subscription where by notification I mean we'll get notification about different transitions from one state to the other in lifecycle publisher we are ready with our private members now what we need to do is make our public members so first up what we will do is we will have our constructor obviously explicit So this line 10 is actually where you're initializing your node which is for the base class. So basically what you're doing here is initializing your parent class. Now let's initialize our subscribers. We had two subscribers already but they were just declared here. right? By the way, this is camel case. I know I like to have my members mostly as camel case. That means let's change this to camel case because we had no name as camel case. Oops, 
description what is the type of message string from std messages right now we will pass the arguments the first one is the topic name which should be messages in our case the second one is the queue size and the third one is the callback what should be the name of our callback we'll make this later but let's call it message callback If you do not understand what happened right now check out my video on std bind to understand what std bind is all about so we have our message subscription here now let's make notification subscription i will actually copy this okay so here we need to change some things of course instead of std messages this is life cycle messages and what was the type this was transition event okay what should be the topic name so the topic name for getting your uh, transition notification is fixed the first part of that will be the name of your node but the node which is publishing so in our case lifecycle publisher we'll call it lifecycle talker and transition event is the second part so this together is your message name this part is actually fixed so transition event is fixed and that is decided by the base class of your lifecycle node so we don't change that this is the queue size and the third one will be the callback we use so the method we use to bind notification callback so this was about our constructor now all we need to do is make these two methods which are message callback and notification callback and i think we should be ready after you populate main of course so message call back and notification callbacks and here what we need to do is we will just get the data which is published from lifecycle publisher check pointer message so we get this data in this data type right std messages message and string and we will use a shared pointer here again now what do we want to do here we don't need to process this information this is just demo code so what we'll do is we will just print this out for us to see so that we know that the subscriber is getting this information logger and what should we print let's write message callback and the data what will be the data here message data and then we convert it to c type string close this okay so this is what we have now we will do something similar for 
notification callback we will just print what message it got which basically means what state lifecycle publisher moved to let's actually print transition from state percentage s to here we will pass two different things from message we will try to get the state publisher started from which will be in start state and the state publisher went to oh yeah you need to use label so here too right we also need to of course populate the argument life cycle messages transition event shared pointer again and message by the way you don't need to remember what the structure of this message is which is transition event message you can always look up on the internet on ROS pages to understand what this message looks like and that's how we got start state and goal state so we have our two callbacks for two different subscribers we have first declared those subscribers and then initialize them we have our class ready now the only thing we need to do is populate main in it rcl cpp with arc c and arc v after that make the node let's call it listener node listener is the name of our class and what should be the name let's call it listener node now we need to spin this so that when you spin the node keeps looking for messages and then it reroutes them to the correct callback and then shut down when spinning is complete in our case when ROS dies let's clean it up a little more just have this okay of course let's just do this now we can move to CMake list so that we can build this node and then run this node let's go there okay here we need to use two keywords add executable and install so that we are all ready for running this node executable what do we need just the listener so here src listener dot cpp and that's it for adding executables for the dependencies we need to add this we have three dependencies right life cycle messages CVP life cycle and std messages that is it so after adding the executable where this is wrong 
so we need to add installations think that's it for our case let's just comment out build testing although that's super important for a proper project let's not use it right now so let's try building the project right now and see what happens okay so we have the package Okay, so we have the package with one node right now, and that is the listener node. What we'll do is we will build the package with only one node. And then we will run this node, which is the listener node. So let's go to ROS workspace. I'm using a new terminal, but if you are using the terminal you used before, you don't need to source Galactic. I have to source it. And then after that, what we'll do is we will first install all ROS dependencies for this package. To install ROS dependencies, this is what you need from your ROS2 workspace. Okay, so you have your ROS dependencies installed. Now, what you need to do is you need to build the package. So, call con build. This should build the package because everything looks fine. Okay, so our package is built. Now, we will run the package. For running the package, what we need to do is we need to first source install setup dot bash now running the package is done with this command ros to run we will run the node by running the package i meant running the node lifecycle demo and then what was the name of the node listener okay so let's see if the node is being run for that what you need to do is go to another terminal source galactic and now, right, ROS2 node list, you have the listener node. So the listener node is actually running. Now try ROS2 node info, listener node. Okay, so you see that the listener node has two subscribers and there's one more, but let's not focus on that. So the two subscribers we had was LC Talker transition events and messages so listener node is subscribing to them so our listener node is ready now what we need to do is we need to go to the next node which is the talker node okay so now we have a listener node which works how about we start working on our lifecycle publisher node let's do that next let's call it lifecycle talker how do we start this with int main of course okay so we have our main right now what do we do next we use our headers so we include these headers memory because we will be using shared pointers RCL CPP. Now you know why we are including this, right? Because we are using ROS2. So we need to have ROS client library CPP to do anything in C++ ROS2. Then we need STD messages like we did in our subscriber. So string is the data type we use in std messages to publish any message from the publisher. And this will be a lifecycle publisher of course. So we have lifecycle node. We need to include this because to make a lifecycle node 
we cannot use node as the parent of the new class we'll create right now we will need to use lifecycle node hence we need this header the next thing we do is use a namespace which is chrono literals we will talk about why we use this later on right now just be patient with this now let's make the class which will be a lifecycle talker which will be the publisher publishing messages on the topic called messages and we can also understand how the transition is happening here from one state to the other now just to recap again lifecycle talker which is a lifecycle publisher or a managed node managed publisher in this case is not like a standard publisher well you have the same functionalities in a way that you can publish all the messages you want in our case so you have all the functionalities of a normal node in general but here you can actually control this node a lot more than a standard node in loss 2 you can decide when it is configured when it is activated deactivated cleaned up and shut down so we will have apis corresponding to these again we will have apis corresponding to configuration activation deactivation cleanup and shutdown so we can actually decide that even though this node is created we don't want to configure it to have the publisher enabled or even if the publisher is enabled we want to control when this node can publish or cannot publish or any other thing so we have a lot more control on this node than a standard node so let's create this class let's call it lifecycle talker instead of a talker because this is a lifecycle node lifecycle node so normally we would use node rclcpp node as the parent of this class right but in this case we need lifecycle node and that is also why we included rclcpp lifecycle slash lifecycle node dot hpp so we have this class right now public will have your constructor and all other members you need to expose and private will have your private members you do not want to expose so in our case private will have one publisher and one timer now in subscriber which was listener.cpp and the name was listener node we had two subscribers right in this case we will have one publisher which will publish any data in our case string messages on the topic messages the other member we need here is a timer which will decide the frequency of publishing this message in ROS1, we would usually just have the publisher and set the rate, but in ROS2, we can use something called a timer, which will decide when publishing will happen because we will have a callback associated with the timer, and that callback will be called again and again. Inside that callback, we will publish our messages. So let's create our publisher. publisher what is the data type of the message to be printed that will be std messages messages and string let's call this publisher publisher now we also need to create a timer This is how we create a timer. So we have a publisher and a timer declared here as private members. Let's go to public and start with our constructor right now. That's it. Life cycle talker because this is our constructor. We need the name of the node, right? Like we did for our listener node. So, node name. But if we are creating a lifecycle docker, we need to pass one more piece of information, which is us telling if we need to use intra process communication or not. So, in this case, it will be a Boolean.
let this default to false let's have initialization cycle node because this is the parent the base class or the parent class always needs to be initialized before the child class is initialized you have your node name this actually needs your intra process communication information so and this is the format in which you send it intra not in star intra process communications and right so this looks right so with this we create our parent class and then our child class is lifecycle toggle and we have the constructor here for that what do we need to do in the constructor usually we would basically initialize the publisher and the timer we had as our private members right they were declared before but this is a life cycle talker and we actually don't want to do it here we want to do it in configuration so until and unless life cycle talker is configured we do not want to create a publisher we have only declared them in private now we discussed that we will have different apis to control the state of life cycle publisher right in this case the name is life cycle talker i repeat so we'll have a couple of apis for that one is configuration api and then second activation third deactivation fourth cleanup fifth shutdown since we are inheriting from life cycle node which is the parent this is already there we need to override these methods there are specific methods for all five of these let's override those methods and this is also where you'll understand what these methods are when we override them so let's write different methods one is called on configure the second one is called on activate the third one is called on deactivate fourth is called on cleanup and fifth is on shutdown right now we start with on configure So what exactly is this? This is the return type of the method we are overriding right now. The method name is on configure. What is the argument to be passed here? It's lifecycle state. So this is our first method we are we are overriding this method and it is called on configure which is where we configure the entire node in our case this is where we will make the publisher and the timer now before we do that let's just copy this method so that we can create the other five methods without typing a lot for on activate which is where we'll activate the publisher we just need to change the name of the method the return type remains the same the arguments remain the same and it is also the case with other methods so it will be on deactivate this one is on cleanup And the last one is on shutdown. Let's move on to actually making the core of this node now, which is configuring, activating, deactivating, doing cleanup and shutdown. So configuring is the step where we need to actually initialize our publisher and our timer the name of this one was publisher create 
create publisher messages message this is the type of data now what do we put here so the first argument is the topic name we decided it will be messages that is also used in our subscriber which is in the listener node so this is fine now we also need to make the timer and this is how you make the timer create wall timer one seconds is basically the frequency and then the callback we need to use bind like we did in our listener node this means we also need to create a method called publish which is the name of the callback we are using right and this is how you bind it so this is our timer now do you see one second here right this is done using namespace use the namespace std chrono literals right this one second or this way of deciding time is actually a part of chrono literals namespace so that is why we were using this namespace that is clear now we have created our timer what else do we need we see that this method returns something right so it says callback return it actually will return either success or failure so that anyone knows that this configuration was successful or it failed so let's return let's just copy this actually callback return success in caps make sure this is correct but this is correct this is not needed okay now let's also print something here so that on the console we know this is done get logger what do we print here let's just print on configure called that's it nothing more so it looks like on configure method is complete now that we are here let's now create a callback called publish which will be used to publish whatever messages we want to publish on the topic messages publish is the method name here let's just publish hello world followed by account so every second we'll print hello messages followed by the number of seconds so in that case we need to maintain account this is our account starting with zero let's create a message to be published this will be a unique pointer What is the type string from std messages so this is our empty message let's populate this message with something right data should be what do we write let's write life cycle docker says hello world followed by a number well there are multiple ways to do it but let's just do it this way first we increment so that we start with this we increment then use okay so we have our message but normally we would just publish here 
in this case we need to understand if the publisher is active or not if it's active only then publish otherwise you can still try to publish and it won't publish so let's have this publish we need to move this unique pointer we don't need this here anymore that's why we move it now just as a piece of information we can see let's print if the publisher is active or not we will activate it in one of the methods we were talking about so one is on configure the second one is on activate and that is where we activate a publisher so let's just check here then if this is not activated let's just write life cycle publisher currently inactive But if that's not the case, let's also print something. Let's print what Lifecycle Publisher is actually publishing. Cycle Publisher is active. publishing let's say some data that data is in message to c type string right okay let's also have semicolon here this looks right if you want to have some space between hello world and the number let's also have that so we are publishing something here now i was saying before that if publisher is not active this line is still here but it will not publish anything so publisher works in this way that if it is not activated it can try publishing but it will not be able to publish and you will get a warning so we are done with publish now let's go back to our next method we want to override which is on activate and this is where we actually activate our publisher now timer is already active publisher is inactive so we will of course try to publish again and again even though the publisher is not active but to make it active let's just do this that is it that is all we need to do to activate the publisher let's also give a small delay so that we have enough time for the publisher to actually be active this is again from chrono literals now what about the return type the return type is this and we will return success right because if the flow the code flow is here we think we've successfully activated everything let's also print something for us to know that we were here get logger we just want to tell that the code flow is here activate called that is it so that is all about on activate we can also deactivate the publisher so in that case let's do publisher on deactivate right so that is all we need now 
of course we will have our return statement and our print statement or rclcpp info statement this will be on deactivate called perfect now the next one is cleanup in cleanup we reset our timer and publish our shared pointers so we basically release them because we do not need them here anymore publisher.reset and timer.reset now we need to do the same things here return something and so this will be on cleanup okay on cleanup called what about shutdown we don't want to do anything in shutdown right now so we will just print and return success that is it on shutdown call so looks like we have all our members ready we wanted private members declared which were publisher and timer we wanted to initialize them and we have done that not in our constructor like a usual publisher node but in our configure so after that we are done with on configure method on activate method on deactivate method on cleanup on shutdown what will happen is when we are configuring only after that will you be able to use the publisher and the timer before that this node will do nothing and then once you are configured you can try publishing which will happen because the timer callback will try publishing again and again but we will be able to publish only once the publisher is active which is the responsibility of on activate method here after that on deactivate is supposed to deactivate our publisher so once on deactivate is called the publisher won't be able to publish any messages even though the timer callback is trying to publish after that we looked at on cleanup where we are releasing our shared pointers for publisher and timer because we don't need them anymore there is nothing going on and the publisher and timers are not needed for us on shutdown is just a placeholder right now where we are printing and returning because we are not using that for our dummy functionality this is just a simple demo piece of code so we are kind of done with our publisher node or our lifecycle publisher node what we need to do is complete main CLCPP in it after that we need to make an executor executors ah. single threaded executor because we do not need more than that this is pretty simple functionality this is where we create our node what is the name of the node what should be the name of this publishing node let's call it lc toggle node will be a shared pointer lifecycle docker let it be lc docker now executor dot add node lc docker node but instead of just lc talker node we will have to use get node base interface from what i've experimented and what i've understood this is only done instead of just using lc talker node because we are using a lifecycle node if we were using a simple node we didn't need to do that now 
executor dot spin after spinning for shutdown okay now one point to make here we use an executor here but not in our listener node in our listener node we just did a spin that is because under the hood of what we see here rclcpp spin no executor directly node it is doing something similar it is actually making an executor which is single threaded executor adding the node which is just node we don't use get node base interface and then after that it is spinning here we need to do it explicitly because this is not a standard node so we have to use this way but effectively the functionality is the same okay so we are done with lifecycle toggle as well let's see if there is any issue here so i think we are ready with the node except that i checked offline and there are some small typos here and there this should be timer base with a capital b that's one i was stupid and i wrote life cyle at some places i hope you already caught that during this video so that's life cycle on line 49 it's get underscore logger and on line 36 there was this small issue now the braces are correct line 24 so we are ready with our node and we will next compile and then try running this node to run this node we first need to change our cmake lists file right we need to add the execution there so let's go there and add our executable right now we just have our listener so let's also add our lc toggle node let's call it lifecycle toggle which is the name of this executable this will be lifecycle toggle dot cpp and this will also be lifecycle toggle this looks fine and we also need to update install with life cycle toggle this should do the trick we don't need to add anything else here now we have the lifecycle node which will be the publisher the toggle node ready so let's build the project again let's see what happens now this should build successfully with two nodes in this package okay so the package is built what we'll do now we'll just run lifecycle docker node and see if everything is fine there to run lifecycle docker node you first need to source install setup dot bash now ros to run lifecycle demo what was the name it was lifecycle toggle now the node is running what we'll do right now is like the listener node we will just see if everything is fine and the node is publishing to the right topics so in that case let's just find the list of nodes ROS to node list we have LC talker right now that is the only node we ran and now ROS to node info LC talker so if you see it is publishing to transition event we knew that already now something to look at here is it is currently not publishing to messages it should right not quite because this node right now has no publisher configured once the publisher is configured in on configure only then we'll be able to see messages as a part of this publishers list so it's fine it will start publishing to messages once we configure it using the next node we are making
The next node will have two service clients so that we can talk to lifecycle docker which is a lifecycle publisher and then we can control the state of this lifecycle docker. So let's start making that right now. Okay, so here we are making a last node now, which will be a service client node. This service client node is like a puppet master, which will control the state of our lifecycle publisher. We created a lifecycle publisher and we said that it will have different methods, right? On configure, on activate, on deactivate, on cleanup, on shutdown. So there are five different states of this node. How do we control this? This is controlled using services. Lifecycle node actually exposes different services. So there are services using which you can get the current state of that node, which is lifecycle publisher in our case, and also ask the node to go from one state to the other. For instance, if you ask the node to go to configure from a specific state, on configure will be called. If you ask the configure node to go to activate state using this service, then it will go to the activate state. So effectively, what we need to do is we need to create a node which will have a service client and it will request the service in lifecycle node, which will be a publisher node to move from one state to the other. So we are basically now creating a node which has two service clients, one service client to get the state of the node, which is the publisher node and the other service client to ask the publisher node to change its state. We have the publisher node already, of course. So let's start making our new node, which will be all about these two service clients. New file, service client dot cpp. Now we begin with int main, right? Return zero. Okay, so we have our boilerplate int main we will next import whatever headers we need in our case we need memory chrono for time related stuff we will do later then our clcpp of course and um, by now you know why Yeah, well, I'm sure you already know about it, but I still want you to say that. Lifecycle messages. There are a couple of lifecycle messages and services we will use here, and we will talk about them as and when we use them. State.hpp. Here we need transition.hpp. Next we have services change state and the last one is get state. So as I said before, we need to change the state using one service client and get the state using another one. As in lifecycle docker, we will also use chrono literal. As in lifecycle docker, we will also use chrono literals. Okay. Now, before we start making our class, which is for the service client or this node having two service clients, we should understand that later in the code, we will need the names of the topics for get state and change state, and also the name of the talker node. We'll talk about why we need it. So as and when we code, we will understand why this is needed. So let's have some constants here. state topic it's lc 
docker which is the name of our node which is publishing and get state and then node change state topic docker change state so we will use these three constants later on let's start making our class now let's call this service client public node because this is a normal node public members constructor and other methods we need to expose and then private members this will have two service clients we need one to get the state of the publisher and one to change the state of the publisher which is a lifecycle publisher it goes without saying now shared pointer rclcpb client for our service client and what is the message type services get state all this is already defined client get state this will be change state change state so we have our clients our service clients let's now go to the constructor and then create our constructor we've only declared these service clients we need to initialize these service clients now so this is the constructor As usual node name I think in the previous section we have used snake case somewhere so that is not a good thing to do because we don't want to mix camel case and snake case when we are building a project but let's just be okay with it for now and please understand that it's because i am doing this at 1 30 a.m at night life cycle messages source get state we should give the topic node get state topic and then client change state So we have both our service clients initialized. Now we have the service clients, but how do we use these service clients? We will have two methods. One is to get the state of the publisher and the other is to set the state of the publisher or change the state of the publisher. Let's have one to get the state of the publisher. Let me 
this will return unsigned int because the state is actually 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So let's have that. This is your get state. Your change state will just return true or false, which means we'll know if it's successful or not. So it is a boolean. Change state. Okay, so we have these two placeholders. For get state, what do we need to use as an argument? There's no argument per se, but we can use a timeout of three seconds. So if we do not get any state within this time of three seconds, we say that we are not able to get it because we cannot do this infinitely, right? We cannot wait for results all the time. So three seconds is our timeout timing. Let's create a request for this service. This is again a standard way to create requests for services. Now this will be a blank request because we don't need to send anything. I just remember this. Okay. So so we have this request and what we'll do first is we'll wait for the service client get state if the service we established before in line 23 doesn't exist so this client will wait for service for this timeout value The service is not up within this time. We raise an error saying that the service is not available. get state get service name right okay so we will raise this error here and in that case your return type is unsigned int which is defined here primary state unknown don't worry this is unsigned int so we are not doing anything funky here now this was about us saying that the service is not available but what if it's available then what you need to do is you need to send the request we created a request the service is available and now we send the request and we get a handle on the future result this future result basically gives you enough information to see if the task is completed so we are sending an asynchronous request this method is not synchronous so here we will not wait until we get the result back so we have a future result now do we just want to go ahead and do something because async send request is not blocking well although we are not waiting for it to complete so it's not blocking we do have to wait for some time before we say that hey either we have some result or it timed out What we'll do is we'll create a method
we'll create a method called wait for result or we'll create a function called wait for result which takes in future result we got right now which is a handle to understand if the task is done and also the timeout value so three seconds is the maximum duration we can wait until we get future result or the future status if not we just move ahead and say that hey the job was not done to say that the job was not done we check future status if future status is not equal to std future status ready i think while coding i get this feeling that i should have been okay with snake case but i think that's for the next video now get logger if we wait for the results for three seconds and we still don't get it we say that basically the server timed out timed out while getting current state of node now do you remember the constant ah, before that okay now do you remember the three constants we had one of them was let's see what toggle node right so this is why we have it so that we know what the name of the toggle is so we can print this stuff here okay so this was when the feature status was not ready what do we want to return here we will return the same thing which is primary state unknown because you are not able to communicate with the service in toggle node we don't know what the state of toggle node is right now but if it's ready what do we do if the future state is ready that means the task is complete so we will get the future result and say that this is the current state of the node future result dot get we will try to get the state future result current state dot id so id of that state and then we will print that information so rclcpp info get logger as usual and then node whatever name has current state whatever the state is let's complete that that will be what toggle node and the state right dot get current state not id though label no, c style styles and let's move it here okay so this looks fine and what should we return we are getting the state right so now we actually return the state okay perfect but what if this feature state dot get is not working i mean it's false so in that case what we do is we throw an error again which is similar to this one and then we also return primary state unknown again so let's just copy this and paste it here paste this here what happened okay this seems fine except that yeah we change this a little bit to say failed to get the current state of this node that's all about it when it comes to get state now we go to change state 
what does change state need it needs the state we want to go to so eight this data type works transition this will be the transition state and unsigned it chrono seconds and then timeout is equal to three seconds because it is a service we are using in the end right so we will use the same logic to say that if the service is available within this duration let's do it otherwise we just say we cannot do it Auto request std make shared lifecycle messages SRV change state request. So this is what we also did before, right? So we have a new request, but this request is not blank. Transition.id transition. Now we use the same idea that if the service is not available, first we say that it is not available. So let's just copy what we did before. But instead of client get state, what do we need? We need client change state. Hmm. So this reminded me of something. There might be an issue here. Okay. We do not need to return primary state unknown here. What do we return? Type is bool. So we return false because the task was not done. But if the service is available, we use future result like before. Client change state, which is another service client. Async send request with request. Okay, so we have our future result handled with us. Now, future state, we'll have the method wait for results, right? Wait for result. What do we need? We need to send future result and timeout. Future status is not equal to std future status ready so either the timeout happened or we got the results so if this is not equal to that then we have to say server timed out like we did before so we copy this it here server timed out and we return false okay after that what happens if this works as in we got the state which is ready if that is the case we do Future result dot get success, right? Then we say transition is successfully triggered, so we are happy.
transition whatever the transition was successfully triggered so we are super happy here static cost to unsigned print transition do we need anything nope this is fine we also return true oh look at me finding another bug future result so this should be okay but we just fix this what if it doesn't happen this way it was not successful in that case we write a warning fail to trigger transition for node whatever this node is which is our life cycle toggle unsigned int transition toggle now okay and what should we return we return false by the way, this true is for Python, this true is for C++. Return false, return false. Have I missed? Yes, see, I am missing semicolon so many times. Yeah, that is also because I also code in another language for a couple of hours every day. So this happens. So in this case, we have our get state method and change state method. Let's have these as snake case itself and not camel case. I think I got to have a standard way of doing it from the next video itself. This was the first video I was trying here. Now, before we go to int main, what we need to do is we already have a placeholder for a method, which is called wait for result. We need to create that, but we also need to create a calling script, which will make sure that we are moving from one state to the other. So we also need to make a calling script, which will move the publisher from one state to the other using this service client. So it will use this service client's service, which is for change state to change it. And then the service client service, which is client get state to get the state continuously. So as I said, let's make the script. What does it take? It takes a service client. So basically the node we'll create, it will take the entire node and then use the service clients technically inside it. So we have two service clients. So service client Okay, so it will take the node itself. And then every couple of seconds, let's say every 10 seconds, we want to move the publisher or the lifecycle publisher from one state to the other. Let's say we need 10 seconds for each state. So let's create a wall rate state change time zero point one. That's the frequency. That means it's 10 seconds so every 10 seconds we'll move to another state let's start with the first state configure so when the publisher or the lifecycle publisher starts it is not even configured so we will start with the configuration let's first change the state of the publisher using configuration in our case using change state which will ask the node publisher to move to transition state service 
client you want to change the state to what life cycle messages message transition transition to configure if that doesn't happen we return and I'll tell you why we return but that's for later let's also fix the typo here so I used snake case unfortunately here so this is done now once the state is changed and we get success which means we do not go to return on line 140 we also need to get the state right that's just for us to know and print the current state of the publisher nothing else okay so this is done now what we want to do is we want to move to another state after 10 seconds so let's copy this let's move to activate when we configure the publisher is ready to publish but it can still not publish unless it is activated the timer will try to publish but it won't work activate and then this transition goes to activate now we also need to add the delay of 10 seconds so we had state change time we do sleep and that will sleep for 10 seconds so we wait for 10 seconds before moving to activate and we use the same idea for deactivating we are going from configure to activate to deactivate and then to activate again and then to deactivate again and then we'll do clean up and shut down so once activation is done you will see the publisher publishing and after 10 seconds we deactivate it again so the publisher will not publish the timer will try to publish but of course it won't be able to publish because the publisher inside is deactivated now once this is done where do we go from here we go to activate again so this is fine and then we go to deactivate again so we are going from activate to deactivate twice okay and after this I think we can go to clean up and then shut down so clean up clean up and the last one is shut down but we are at unconfigured state so as per the demo I've seen on github we cannot do transition shutdown we have to do transition unconfigured shutdown so after this nothing will happen this should be fine now we are left with two things one to make the wait for future method which was named wait for result so let's look at this code we are at wait for result right there is no such method right now so let's create a method called wait for result why is this an error unmatched that's weird aha uh -huh. there is no closing braces somewhere Ah, 
Ah, okay. Now I also see some small issue here. Future status. This is future state. So let's change this to future status. Does it also happen before? No, it doesn't happen before. So it's fine. Now let's create a wait for result method. There will be a data type for return, right? Let's it's not void. I'm just making placeholder right now. Wait for result. What did it take? It took future handle and the timeout. Okay, now the thing is this wait for result is used for both the services. So we create a template so that we can use this method for the both of them. Okay, after this, we need to change our arguments. Since we are using template, we will have future t. Let's call it future. Add wait time t. Right, also the return type should be std future status why so because here we are using future status and then we are checking it so this should be of the type future status so we have this method next we try to make a loop which will expire after the timeout so within that timeout period which will be three seconds as we pass this value we need to get the status of this asynchronous call Let's calculate the end time. Chrono steady clock now plus timeout. Right? And now what we need to do is we need to decide a wait period between two consecutive runs in a loop. seconds wait period let's have 100 which will be 100 milliseconds now let's initialize this status to Future status timeout. So this is the local variable we need to change. We'll have a do while loop where you will calculate the time, the current time. Chrono. Steady clock now and then calculate time left and minus now. We just need to check if time left is less than zero seconds. If that is the case, then you break. And when that happens, if the status has not changed, we'll send back a timeout. But if that hasn't happened and we have time, then we update the status. How 
how much time do we wait for we wait for let's see if time left is less than wait period so what is wait period that's 100 milliseconds if time left is less than wait period that means we can wait for only time left right because we are moving in 100 milliseconds otherwise you wait for wait period which is 100 milliseconds and then you'll get the status after that and you have to do this while oh, RCPP is okay and also status is not equal to std future status ready because if it's ready then we don't need to do all of this and we can just return the status okay so in this case what is happening is if the status is returned as ready so if the asynchronous call is complete then we return the status and the status here will change to ready but if not we are here until time is out and then if let's say it doesn't happen and your async call doesn't go through we will not send the status which is ready we will send the status which is timeout initially and here we'll keep waiting and it won't be ready so in any case we will send ready only when async call is complete otherwise we will not so this was about wait for result and we have the last leg which is completing this main function here as usual we do init arc c arc v we make this service client node make shared what was the name service client what do we want to call it let's call it service client okay now we need to use executors Okay, we need to add this node. Service client. Here we are doing something interesting. Okay, so we made a callie script. Right. And we need to use an asynchronous call so that we just keep waiting for the future in the end and if something goes wrong we are not stuck there forever we can come out of it you might want to google a little bit of this if you are not comfortable with this so let's bind call script service client spin it spin until future complete and then we spin this script towards the end was shut down okay so remember I said that we have these return and we don't know what's happening there what's happening there is this executor spins the script until the future is complete so this will wait until the script returns something and if let's say this change state was not successful it will return from here so apart from getting all the print statements saying hey the change was incomplete this executor will basically end 
this pin and then RCLCPP shutdown will end this node. So that's why we need to use return statements there and that's why we have this asynchronous call. Async. Okay, so I built service client and because we were coding live, there were minor syntactic issues we are gonna fix right now, starting from the first one. Let's go to line 48. Here, there is a typo. Next line 94. There is this. Line 101. There is a typo again. It's first mostly typos. 116. This is a pointer. So we need to do this. 133. Typo again. And signed in here. 143. We were using camel case here. I think in the next video, as I said before, I will definitely make sure that we are using the same case throughout because of my first live video. I think we mixed that up. And line 245. Typo again, unconfigured. So yeah, that's it. And now we can go to our CMake lists file and then make changes there so that we can run our service client node. This is our CMake file right now. All we need to do is add executable for our service client and also use it for install. So let's do that now. Let's copy this. Let this name be service client. So And then in install, we just need to include service client, right? So that is it. Now we are ready to build and then we will run our project to see what is actually happening and how the lifecycle talker is interacting with service client and listener. Okay, so right now we made our third node, which was the service client node. Let's build the package again, and all the three nodes should be built. Call con build. I'm using the same terminal, so I don't need to source anything else. This should be fine, and all the three nodes should be built for this package. All the three nodes are built. Now what we'll do is we'll run all three of them to see how they're interacting and what exactly is happening there. Now, because I need to run all three nodes together, we need three terminals, right? Instead of using three terminals normally, I will go to Tmux and use it. Now, you can choose to have three different terminals. I have Tmux and that is what I use most of the time. So I will do that, but that is not something you need to do. So I have three different terminals right now. I will source Galactic and source the package. I'll do the same here. And the same here. Okay, so now let's run the first node, which is the listener node. It will subscribe and that is all. ROS to run lifecycle demo and listener so this node should be running now next let's run the docker node ros to run lifecycle demo lifecycle toggle Ah, of course. Okay, so our publisher, which is Lifecycle Toggle, is running now. 
let's run the last node which is the service client node so ROS2 run life cycle demo the third one is service client now you will see a lot of stuff happening on the three screens and we'll talk about it okay so what has happened is if you look at the third screen for service client it has asked LC toggle which is lifecycle toggle to move to the next state which was from inactive to oh no it was to configure state so then it moved to inactive and then it moved to active and then it'll move to inactive again and then it will move to active again so what's happening right now is service client is actually asking the publisher node to move from one state to the other it starts from unconfigured to configured and then it moves to active and then it moves to inactive again then active again and inactive again and then clean up and then shut down so right now we say that we have moved to unconfigured state so you see clean up on the first screen and then after clean up we will see that this has moved to shutdown state this happens every 10 seconds and that is what we've coded in our service client right so every 10 seconds the state of the publisher should change so the service client node actually has two service clients inside and this is how the node is actually controlling lifecycle publisher or the name is lifecycle talker in our case so lifecycle talker is asked to transition from one state to the other every 10 seconds and what we see in the first screen which is the listener node just printing the current state of the lifecycle publisher using one of the messages of transition events and also printing what the publisher is actually publishing whenever it is in its active state when it is not in its active state you see these warnings right trying to publish messages on topic but the publisher is not activated so that is the publisher in its inactive state so this is how the control is and this is how you can control a lifecycle node so this was a simple and nice demo about using lifecycle nodes and how you can control them using service lines this is a very trivial example where we made a simple package to control a publisher. But as I said before, imagine a scenario where you have a node and you need to control it completely, control different states. If you have a hardware project, you want the node to publish only when certain requirements are met, otherwise not publish it. Normally we can of course have a lot of booleans within the node itself, within the class and then use all of that. But all of this is abstracted out and then just using the concepts of lifecycle nodes, you can have a lot more control over the node itself. As I also said before, as of now, only publishers are implemented for lifecycle node. If you want to use a subscriber or a service client as a lifecycle node, you can create a normal node and inside it, you can have a lot of flags to control what's happening. But based on my conversation on Twitter, I just realized that lifecycle node is only implemented already for publishers and you cannot do it for subscribers and service clients. I hope subscribers and service clients come out with this functionality soon, but let's see what happens. So this was an example. This was a demo about lifecycle publishers. I hope you liked it. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. We'll talk about it. Even I'll learn more with all the other questions and I'll see you in the next video soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.